Welcome to California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. I'm glad you're with us today. We will be speaking with three members of the Long Beach City College family over this half hour. We will start with the president of Long Beach City College. His name is Eloy Oakley. Then we will be joined by two elected trustees. Their names, Jeff Kellogg and Roberto Odanga. But we start with President Eloy Oakley. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank and I you. know all three of you are very relieved that Proposition 30 passed. Of course, that was the initiative that increased sales tax by a quarter cent for four years, taxes on the wealthy for seven years. And I will admit to you, sir, I didn't think it was going to pass. What happened? Well, fortunately, Californians stepped up. I think uh, along the way there, we lost faith that Californians believed in public education. And I think we've been shown that they do, and so we're very thankful that Californians stepped forward. But not only did it pass, it passed in pretty much a landslide. It was over 55% of the vote. For an initiative that's dealing with tax increases, that's quite a margin. Oh, absolutely, and you know, many of us were surprised by the margin, but we're very thankful because I think Californians recognized what was happening to their public schools and realized that California can't be the great state that it is without them. Now, Proposition 38, which would have increased income taxes for all, by some was seen as more favorable to the education institution because it would have guaranteed funding, but no funding for 13 and 14, for community colleges. Right. And so did that cause some trepidation for you that those competing initiatives could wind up canceling each other out? Well, absolutely. In, in many respects, uh, many of us in public education were troubled. I mean, there's certainly aspects of Prop 38 that were very favorable to the K-12 community. Right. And in terms of policy, I think it was a uh, good policy. But unfortunately, we had competing initiatives and the governor's initiative really had the greatest impact on our colleges, universities, and K-12. So we needed to rally around that. So let's talk about that initiative. What does it do? It's the law now. Right. Does it add funding? Does it plug holes in funding? What does it do? It basically plugs holes in funding right now because the 2012-2013 state budget was based on those revenues, right. we're able to continue to move forward in the current budget. The unfortunate part is that the current budget still doesn't help us maintain the levels of education that we need in this state. So it's not the complete solution, but it plugs a big hole and allows us to move forward. So let's talk about Long Beach City as an example of what's happening at the other 111 campuses across right. the community college system. There had been discussions prior to Prop 30's passage that Long Beach City would consider cutting 17 programs, would look to cut faculty. Uh, where are we now that we know that you will receive funding through Prop 30? Well, what we know right now is that we will not have to cut as deeply as we had proposed. And of course, we wanted to ensure that we had a plan to deal with the possibility that Prop 30 sure. would fail. But since it's passed, we're able to reduce the size of those cuts. We still have to make cuts and we still have to be responsible stewards of our taxpayer dollars. So we need to ensure that our expenditures meet the current revenues in the state. And that's what we're going to achieve. What I want to ask you as well is about the phenomenon that is the wait list. Mm -hmm. We know that in the fall of 2012, 85% of all community college students reported that they would be on a wait list. Another phenomenon which I read about through the LA Times series, which I thought was outstanding, is that some students are so desperate to get the classes they need to matriculate to four year that they are attending two, three, four community college mm -hmm. campuses. Um, commuting, public transportation. With the passage of Prop 30, will the need to create a wait list and or commute to three different campuses change? The short answer is no. But Why? It <laughs> Why? Come on! Because what Prop 30 has done is ensure that we don't have to turn away more students. Uh, but we still have the thousands and thousands of students that we've turned away over the last three years to deal with. We have huge demand in California. We have some of the largest high school graduation classes in our still? history. Still? We have still huge unemployment. So we have huge demand that we still have to deal with. At the same time, as you suggest, 
there are funding crises going forward. Mm -hmm. And I understand that community colleges, which had not been in the fundraising business, mm -hmm. are now in the fundraising business. It's a new phenomenon. It's one that is just taking off, but I've read some of your colleagues at Pasadena City College are fundraising, Santa Monica City College are fundraising. I learned that at Bakersfield College, I think last year someone donated $14 million, right. which is a huge sum of money for community college. Is Long Beach going down that path? We are on that path. We have been on that path for several, several years. Uh, we, we are very fortunate. We have a great foundation here in Long Beach. It's an independent foundation, the Long Beach City College Foundation. And we recently raised nearly $7 million to fund scholarships uh, at Long Beach City College. But going forward, please, uh, we need to continue to increase that fundraising. We need to find more public-private partnerships in order to meet the demand that's out but there. But what I understand is, is that it's one thing to fundraise for scholarships. Right. What I understand is that the push in fundraising is not to fund scholarships per se, but to fund the creation of existing classes. Right. To fund just keeping the doors and the air conditioners open and on. Yes, I mean, that is a need that community colleges have not had to get into, but that's definitely happening now. The way we're approaching is we're looking for partnerships with industry, with other public-private partners to ensure that we can not just keep the doors open, but that we can provide the quality education that our community needs. Here's the challenge, though. Most community college, I'll say graduates, will matriculate mm -hmm. to a four-year institution, and their loyalty almost invariably is to that four-year institution. It's not in our ethos to give to a community college. How do we change that ethos? Because for so many, if it wasn't for that community college, there would be no four-year institution. That community college so often saved the lives of folks that were falling down. They're able to snap out, and it was only because of that that they moved forward. Well, you're absolutely right. And we are to blame for that, the community colleges. We have not reached out to our alumni. Long Beach is a little different. We've maintained ties to our alumni, but even that, we've not done a very good job. So we're reaching out to our alumni. We're connecting them with the college because you're right. Most of them would say they are in the positions they're in because of their experience at the community college. So we know that recently the community college system lost a great leader. He mm -hmm. hasn't passed away, of course, Jack Scott. <laughs> uh, he was an assembly member, a senator. Yes. It's time for him to move on. He wants to go uh, enjoy his time. We now have a new leader with the community college system whose name I forget. What is his name? Uh, Bryce Harris. Right. Dr. Bryce Harris. Talk to us about his arrival <laughs> on the scene. It comes at a time with Prop 30 passing, mm -hmm. but also with a package of reforms that made right. it through the legislature. Some would call controversial, others would call forward thinking. Talk to us about that. It is a critical time in our community colleges. We have a number of reforms that are have just made their way through the legislature or made their way through our Board of Governors, and we need to implement them. So we're all looking to um, Dr. Bryce Harris to lead this system to ensure that we can implement these critical, critical reforms because we owe it to our students to finish the job that we began. And these reforms will help more students complete their college education, go on and get into careers that will help them become viable in this economy. At the same time, I know that Long Beach City has a very strong relationship with Cal State Long Beach. Yes. And I know that the matriculation is, I mean, it's straight, you know, it's right down the street. How important was Prop 30's passage to continue that flow from Long Beach City to Cal State Long Beach? Because mm -hmm. the, the Cal State system, they were the loudest <laughs> when it came to Prop 30's passage. They sent out letters to all their applicants saying, if Prop 30 doesn't pass, we're taking fewer students, not just Long Beach, but the right. Cal State system. If Prop 30 would have failed, it would have been a direct hit to the, this community in Long Beach of over $70 million. Really? That would have had a significant impact on the number of students who can successfully matriculate through our system and go on and get their bachelor's degree at Cal State Long Beach. I'm sure you're relieved. Absolutely. His name is Eloy Oakley. He is the president of Long Beach City College. When we come back, we'll be speaking with one of your trustees, Jeff Kellogg, and then Roberto Oranga. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We'll be right back on California Edition. Which CSU campus saw the greatest number of freshman applicants for fall 2013? CSU Fullerton, Long Beach, Pomona, or CSU San Luis Obispo? 
Cal State Long Beach received the most freshman applications for fall 2013, 55,614. Welcome back. It's California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We just spoke with Eloy Oakley. He's the president of Long Beach City College. Now we're speaking with a vice president of the Long Beach City College Community College District. I said that correctly. His That's name right. is Jeff Kellogg, as I said. And, sir, I want to get your sense about the passage of Prop 30. Of course, uh, President Oakley was pleased. Are you? Absolutely. We have to thank the voters of California because they stepped up and to help the community college system and K-12s. Mm -hmm. But uh, most importantly for us, it eliminated a lot of our extremely difficult cuts that we we're going to have to make. Uh, it doesn't get us out of the... Uh, uh, the difficult times in front of us, but at least it's not going to be as bad as what we had intended. And, and explain that, because I think there are many voters who are pleased to have supported Prop 30, but may not have necessarily understood that this really stopped the bleeding. It didn't that's add new funding. Not at all. And that's exactly the best point we try to repeatedly make to individuals, that the uh, this essentially gets us uh, our heads almost above water but we're still gonna to have to deal with some difficulties because we still are not being funded to the levels we need to be funded. And I was actually surprised when President Oakley mentioned that the college is still considering cutting a certain number of programs. Before Prop 30 passed, LBCC was looking at cutting up to 17 programs, uh, laying off up to 10 full-time faculty. Mm -hmm. He said it won't be that severe, but you still need to make cuts? We still will need to make cuts. So Why? Said it. We still are not getting, through the funding mechanism for community colleges in California, it still is inadequate. It's still doesn't give us the funding we need to do the programs at the current level, which is really challenging because we're sitting here where more people want to come to the community college, and yet we're not getting the money from Sacramento. And, and what's frustrating, I'm sure, is when you look at the amount of money charged to the students, um, it is the least expensive in the nation. But that begs the question, if it's the least expensive in the nation, why not raise fees it's, so you can charge, get, have more services? But we've already raised it tremendously right. in the last to two the, years. To the $46 a unit in California right. Community Colleges, uh, it's still, I think the average you would look at, it's about $1,100 a year to get a uh, to be at Long Beach City College and, or any And the national college. average is thirty, almost 3300 oh, a year. Significantly more. It's still a great bargain. So what do you do? I mean, if you are underfunded, why not go back to the students? Well, but it's easy to say, but consider that the students have gone from $26 a unit to $46 a unit in 18 months. And the, and the interesting thing that most people don't realize also, and it's, it is what it is, and that is that everything is done through Sacramento. We right. as trustees don't control the dollars per units. It's done through Sacramento. And then those additions that they put on, as in the past, is not guaranteed to come back to the colleges. It goes into the general fund. I, I spoke at President Oakley about that. And we discussed that community colleges are now fundraising. And they're not necessarily fundraising for scholarships. They're fundraising so that they can keep programs in place. It, what do you think about that trend? Well, it's, it's an unfortunate trend, but it's reality. And that's where your foundations become much more critical on, on raising money to help students. And, we, and we've actually done that in Long Beach. And it's just, it's addressing the needs. We cannot afford just to sit back and take the approach of, gee, Sacramento's not doing their job, therefore what are we going to do? Well, we have to take some action some way. And one of which is that, that area of trying to raise funds in uncharacteristic ways that was never even considered in the past. But, but here's the challenge, and I mentioned this, you know, you're a big booster of Oregon. You went to the University of Oregon, you support, you're a big alum. I don't know, did you go to junior college? Did you start? I went, I went for a short time to Long Beach City College. Okay, so a lot of folks will go to a junior college for a short time or for two years. They go to their four-year university, and that's who they support. That's right. How do you get your alumni of a community college to support you when they're looking towards their foyer. And that, that's a, it's a great question. There's a lot of challenges, but that's why the foundation, which is really, that's your fundraising wing, uh, that's where they become much more important. And there are a lot of uh, colleges in California that are uh, exceptional in doing this. So, and, and there's different degrees. There's no one pure answer to it, but uh, Long Beach needs to be better in that area, and we're good but we're going to have to do better because we can't expect to get any funding from Sacramento. It's really? just not going to happen. You really believe that even That's with it. the Democrats yeah. taking a two-thirds majority and even with the Democrats saying ostensibly that they want to fully fund higher education? Well, it's interesting because, and here's the answer, in the, in the, the K-12 system is a strong political uh, influence in Sacramento. UC system, Cal State system, the community college system, even though it has in California 2.6 million students, it has 112 college campuses compared to the UC Cal State. Right. We are the least 
powerful political force in Sacramento. Why? You know, that's a, probably a great question to ask, but we're not the ones that spend a lot of money. We don't have the, the resources Why? as a system. As a system, we're 112 different colleges. We but you all have, what is it, 78 districts? We have 72 districts. Okay. Uh, and, that's and, still but, too many. But that's, but, Pursuant and, to the argument. But, the, but the, even though, and that though in itself, is that there needs to be in the future, potentially, community colleges are need, going to have to look at changing their structure. Uh, I know that it goes against... To what extent? The, well, with the, uh, you, that's 72 districts. Uh, some of those districts, multi-colleges you have, they really... They're, they, the system itself is going to have to start looking at how they're going to be different structurally. Should districts consolidate? I believe they should. There's a lot of really? districts that I think are so small, even though they address the certain needs. And this is the question of local control. You're not going to see that in Long Beach because of the sheer size. But there's a lot of districts that there's less than 5,000 students. They're a college. Uh, there's districts that could be, and they could be better served if they it, were in is numbers. That, is that point under discussion? I mean, It's always been talked about in the very back of the back room. <laughs> So uh, what about bringing it to the front room? Well, it's going to take some districts to finally realize that they're going to have to look at joining and partnering. And there's other ways colleges are doing this. For example, we do services in Long Beach. We have adjacent districts in Cerritos, for example, uh -huh. and, and actually Los Angeles, L.A. Harbor. Why is it that we all offer exactly the same thing? Right. Why are we not working better together to say, you offer these course curriculums, we'll offer those? Uh, because every college wants to have everything for their students, and I understand that, but that's not what the future is going to be. It's interesting you mentioned that. I spoke with President Oakley about this phenomenon of students having to travel to different community colleges to get the courses they need. And in fact, that number has doubled in yeah, the last few years. not unusual. And it's been very frustrating, and what some colleges are considering is giving preferences to local students to Which prevent right. that. But then Which. that seems to be counterintuitive to that student who's industrious and is trying to get out. Well, and we, and we have preference now in, in Long Beach City College. We actually, for local students, the Long Beach Unified School District, they're given preferences and as part of our uh, what we call Promise Pathways. So we are looking at things to do that, to, and, and that's for a lot of other reasons as mm -hmm. well. But, but I really think the colleges have to start looking at things and how they do business differently. The biggest problem you have is when you have students that are spending six, seven, eight years in a community college getting an AA degree. By the time they're in their mid to late 20s, even though they're working, our students traditionally are working full time, uh, that still is too long. Now, I know that I believe in January or early in 2012, some reforms were passed out right. of Sacramento. And one of those reforms focused on trying to focus students. Mm -hmm. Once they get in, put them on a plan to make sure that they meet their goals and their needs. And in fact, I understand that part of that plan will disincentivize students who have more than, is it 60 units or 160? It's, it's, it's a number, well, we, we always say, when you get over, I don't know the exact number, right. but it is one of those, to, to get your AA degree, it's, it's, there's a certain percentage. A I formula. Say, and, yeah. and it's not, but when you suddenly have students at your college that are, have already generated over 100 units, right. They're Something's gonna, wrong. Something is right. wrong. Because so you only need how many to graduate? It, it is. That's why I went to 60 yeah. odd units to right. get your AA degree. Exactly. But, but then you see, that's why you see a lot of students that don't get their AA. They mm -hmm. just say, well, I have enough units to transfer, not get my AA. But we really need to start to look at things on, especially in those areas. You talked about the reforms. A lot of that is also on people that repeat the course over and over and over again. Why are they repeating? Because well, they're failing? They're failing or there's other issues going on. They drop. Uh, for, for whatever reason, we are, that part of those reforms is to address those, the repeat of students on class over and over again. They're taking a seat that other people, and that's part of the reforms but they're do, looking at. Well, I, I understand, and they seem to be laudable goals, but do we even have the staff to, to put people through this counseling process? Well, now you're over in the counseling side, that too, and, and you're seeing counseling being much more... Uh, uh, technologically driven. There, right. it's, it's never eliminating the human element because you can't. Of but at the same time, you're never going to get to those numbers that counselors will say is the generally accepted practice of how many counselors per students. We're never going to get back to those numbers again. We okay. just are not physically. Well, his name anything. is Jeff Kellogg. He is the vice president of the Long Beach City Community College District. When we come back, we'll be speaking with the president of the Long Beach Community College District. His name is Roberto Oranga. I'm Brad Palmer. We'll be right back on Charter California Edition. How many transfer applications did the 23 CSU schools receive for fall 2013 admission? The 23 CSU schools received 234,214 transfer applications for fall 2013, an increase of 21.2% from 2012. 
Welcome back. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Our guest, Roberto Uranga. He is a trustee for the Long Beach Community College District, but he just finished a term as the president of the National Association of Community College Trustees. Yes, the president of the national organization, sir. Congratulations. Thank Talk you. to us about your term. Thank you. By the way, I love the way you pronounce my name. Uh, Uranga. I try. I try. Very, very few people yes. can be able to uh, pronounce it yes. that way. I'm taking Spanish. Oh, I, well, I think well, I told well, you that. Wonderful. Yes. I hope you're taking it at Long Beach I'm, City College. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a private tutor, but okay. you know, be that as it may, I don't know how he, he sees my skills, yeah. but I'm progressing a bit. Uh, no, it was uh, a whirlwind uh, oh, tour as the national chairman of the Association of Community College Trustees. Um, got uh, to do some travel and represent the uh, American uh, colleges in, in uh, England. Oh, wow. I got to go to uh, Birmingham, England for their association of colleges that and, they have. And do they have a similar two-year system like we do in America? Yes, they do. It, 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 it's called the Association of Colleges, uh, mm -hmm. which is very similar to in the system that we have here with the, in the U.S. in terms of community colleges. Uh, of course, they function a little differently. It's a different culture. It's, right. a, it's a different educational system. But the uh, overall um, goal of their programs right. are the same. It's, and it's is it to matriculate to a four-year university? To ultimately? eventually get into a right. university and then uh, and also uh, have those other um, areas that the other colleges don't provide, such as technical education, vocational. vocational right. you know. What about the other states? How do the other state systems operate as compared to California, for example? Well, it depends uh, on the state because there are some, uh, like here in California, for example, we have 72 districts, right. 110 community colleges. Right. In uh, the southern states, uh, like Mississippi and Louisiana, for example, they have state associations. So it might be one college, one huge community college oh, district represented by one uh, board that would be comprise of perhaps 20 Elected? trustees. Elected? Uh, appointed. Appointed. You know, so some of it, those are right. appointed by... Uh, by the governors, right? Uh, every, every four years, every election, right. there's always a transition between, you know, who's in and who's out in community colleges. Now, what's interesting about community colleges in California is that while we have seen tremendous increases in tuition and fees, mm -hmm. highest in the nation, we still are the cheapest, oh. the least expensive. Well, uh, fifty out of fifty. I, I prefer to uh, characterize it that way. Least it's, expensive. It's, it's a great buy. It is a great buy, but. That presents challenges yeah. because if you are the least expensive and a state is looking to raise revenue, go to the place where you're the least expensive, community colleges. Right. Even though our increases have been great yeah. and the highest in the nation, is that a concern of yours? Well, only in the sense that because of the, the way that monies are distributed, uh, when you increase fees for community colleges, not all the fees go back into the community college system. Mm -hmm. A lot of it goes into the general fund of to course. help the California state budget uh, get balanced. So that that's the, the difficulty in that. And, and we're also tied in in what they call Prop 98. Right. Uh, Prop 98 is tied in with K-12s. So but it's a K-14 formula. But it's a K-14 and it all goes into the big pot and it's distributed from there. I have to ask you, as I did with President Oakley and Trustee Kellogg, how are you feeling in light of the fact that Proposition 30 did pass and Proposition 30 dedicates funds to community colleges, unlike Prop 38, right. which did not? Yeah. Prop 38 was uh, mostly a K-12 measure, right. and, then, and that was one of the criticisms about Prop 38. And uh, while we certainly support K-12, uh, it, it didn't actually help anything right. for community colleges. So Prop 30 was our major focus on that. Um, and we are obviously very ecstatic that it passed. I have to but ask But we you, have to be cautionary. Yeah. I, I do have to ask you, as I said earlier in the program, did you think it would pass? Because I didn't think it was going to pass. <laughs> uh, I thought it would pass. You did. But uh, I thought it would pass uh, very, very marginally. Uh, it was and, uh, but a it was, landslide. It, it was doing fantastic uh, uh, a year ago. Right. And then uh, right close to the election time, it, it's uh, it's numbered, it's told, it's, it was polling uh, fairly low, it was falling down. And so 50, 51 percent. Yeah, there was there was a, a, a cautionary uh, support of it. So at that point. what do you think happened? I mean, how did it get to a place where over 55 percent of the voters in California decided to tax themselves 
a quarter cent on sales tax for four years for the wealthy, uh, increase in income tax for seven years. I mean, California hadn't passed a statewide sales tax since 2004. Yeah. Well, I think it has a lot to do with education. Yeah. I, I think that the, the state of California is uh, a education state. I mean, it, it, I think it believes in its educational systems. Mm -hmm and we know that it's broken and mm -hmm. uh, it needed to be fixed and i think that the citizens uh, realize that and we need and that our colleges and schools need help but here's the challenge yes prop 30 provides funds for k14 as well as uc and csu right. but it's not new funds it prevents further cuts because yeah. the, as you know the june budget uh, assumed Prop 30's passage. Right. So, yeah, we stopped the bleeding, yeah. but we yeah. still are at a yeah. place where we're, we're, and we're still uh, engaged in uh, reviewing our budgets and we're still looking at where we can uh, uh, perhaps uh, combine and, and consolidate some mm. programs, uh, some uh, degree programs to make it create Yeah, I, I spoke with President o um, Eli Oakley and he said that even though there isn't a move to cut as many programs right. as initially had been planned, mm -hmm. there's still discussions about cuts. Right. Right. And uh, you know, much of what we have to do is data driven. So we've got to look at the data. We have to look at success rates in the mm -hmm. terms of what these programs are provided and are the students getting their money's worth in regards to what they pay for fees and what they're getting at, at the end of it. A certificate, a degree, transferring. Um, those are very important uh, topics for us in terms of uh, what we, how we are doing as a community college. If we can, I'd like to shift gears and talk about election 2012 generally. Sure. Um, as you know, it was quite a year for the Democrats in California mm -hmm. as well as throughout the nation. Um, and what's most interesting is I think a sleeping giant woke up and that's yes. the Latino electorate. Right. And you are a leader in the Latino community in this right. region. Right. Um, we expected President Obama to do well amongst Latinos. He broke 70%, mm -hmm. but Latino turnout, while still not as high as its population, mm -hmm. really jumped. Mm -hmm. Is this the year where we, where we saw that turn in terms of Latino participation? Well. Uh, Perhaps if I could phrase it in this way, please. Uh, the Republican Party has woken up to the fact that the mm. Latinos are an important co constituency that they need to uh, to reach out to. One of the things that they didn't do this past election was draw the effort. Well, basically they were bashing uh, immigration uh, immigration reform. They weren't addressing it, mm -hmm. or at least not addressing it in a way that would be. Uh, beneficial for the Latino community, but so they they turned yeah. off a lot of the Latino constituents because that, they didn't they didn't come forward with a very strong immigration plan. I think you're being generous. I mean, some have argued that the Republican brand is dead as it relates wow. to the Latino community. <laughs> I mean, do you yeah. think it is they have a poison? Lot of, they have a lot of healing to do, a lot of uh, introspection, and a lot of self evaluation. I mean, let's think about in Orange County, a sitting Republican assembly member yeah. lost mm -hmm. his seat. Democrats don't win in Orange County other than in small pockets. But you said, but I, exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. You still have your small pockets, Costa Mesa, for right. example. This I mean, was a Fullerton-based seat. And then you still have uh, Arizona, where uh, Sheriff Arpaio right. uh, won re-election, despite the great effort out there to oust him out. A at the same time. So they're there. They're right. still there. What do Democrats do, in your mind, if they want to solidify their support amongst Latino voters? Well, one of the most important topics, obviously, is uh, immigra immigration reform. Sure. Uh, we do have the uh, Dream Act still uh, in in the in play right. in, in Congress, and uh, hopefully this year will be one of those. Well, this next Congress. How important be one was of it? Do you believe to Latino voters that President Obama, through executive action, mm -hmm. uh, uh, passed or imposed or created uh, the deferred action the policy? Deferred action, right. How important was that to Latino voters? Huge. It was. It was huge, uh, because it provides at least an understanding that there is a pathway towards citizenship, mm. and it uh, basically provides uh, students who are in that who had who've been in, brought in, here in, not in that uh, uh, between worlds of going towards citizenship, right. trying to get an education and then can't get any further because they don't apply for, right. they don't qualify for financial aid. And they can't get jobs once and they, they. And, and you, know, you, you still need a social security number no to, doubt. To, to get a job. His name is Roberto Uranga. He is <laughs> with the Long Beach Community College District as a trustee on Bride Pomeranz. We thank you so much for watching Charter California Edition.